we have um, some very special guests to chat to us about uh, Alan Turing and uh, Bletchley Park. So, um, first of all, uh, Sir John Scarlett. Sir John was uh, Chief of the British Secret Intelligence Service from 2004 to 2009, and today he is the Chairman of the Bletchley Park Trust. Sir John. Um, and Sir John Dermot Turing, who is the nephew of Alan Turing, uh, he first of all studied uh, genetics at uh, Oxford and then turned to the law and uh, as a partner at Clifford Chance. Uh, and he's a trustee uh, at Bletchley Park. Sir John Dermot Turing. Thank you. And first of all, we're, all, we're going to be joined by hangout um, by two of the, the guys involved uh, in making the, the invitation game. I'm a little bit worried because I can't see the hangout. Oh, there's, there's Graham uh, and uh, Teddy is there as well. They, they, you can see them, but I can't. Um, Graham is uh, the script writer and executive producer of the invitation game. And the, the script of, of the film topped the 2012 uh, blacklist, which is Hollywood's list of the best unproduced screenplays. Uh, and it got, this, it got the highest score in the history of, of the blacklist. I'm d delighted to, to see that the, the script has now made its way into the film. Uh, and also on the Hangout, in the smaller uh, thumbnail there, uh, Teddy Schwartzman, who is the founder and principal of Black Bear Pictures, and he oversees all the operations, the development, the production, and the planning uh, of the films. So uh, we're going to chat to them in a second, but first of all, we're going to kick off with a clip from the film. you're doing here, the top secret program at Bletchley, you're trying to break the German Enigma machine. What makes you think that? It's the greatest encryption device in history and the Germans use it for all major communications. If the Allies broke Enigma, well, <laughs> it would turn into a very short war indeed. Of course that's what you're working on. But you also haven't got anywhere with it. If you had, you wouldn't be hiring cryptographers out of university. You need me a lot more than I need you. I, I like solving problems, Commander. And Enigma is the most difficult problem in the world. No, Enigma isn't difficult. It's impossible. The Americans, the Russians, the French, the Germans, everyone thinks Enigma is unbreakable. Good. Let me try, and we'll know for sure, won't we? Right. Uh, so over to, to Graham first, who, who wrote the, the script. And I understand, Graham, that you've been very interested in the subject of Alan Turing from, from a, a young age. How, how did the film come about? Um, I always sort of imagined that I'd be, um, I sort of end up, uh, like you guys, actually working in computer science. Um, but um, I didn't. I ended up being a writer. Um, and so, you know, I think among, like, uh, sort of techie, computer-minded kids, um, Turing has long stood as an inspiration and someone who kind of uh, thought differently from everyone around him and, and because of his differences was able to sort of see the world in a new way and, and, and do things that other people didn't think were possible. So it was sort of a dream of mine, even after I became a writer, um, you know, Turing was a subject I always wanted to write about. And uh, yeah, I feel so privileged that, that Teddy and I got to be involved in doing it. And how, how long did, did, did it take from, from screenplay to, to screen? I started writing about four years ago now, actually. So uh, Alan Turing was one of the great geniuses of the 20th century, and I'm not. Um, so you're sort of like, <laughs> oh my god, this is a huge story. This is such an important story. Um, it, it, it's a lot of, uh, you hope you have something to add to it. You hope you have something to add to Turing's legacy. Um, because his legacy does need to be told, preserved. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's uh, after about a year, we on our way to Teddy and to Morton um, and developed the script for another year. Um, and then we were, we were off into production. And over to you, Teddy. I mean, it doesn't, it, at first glance, it doesn't look like the, the most promising material for a, a blockbuster film. Did you, did you find it easy to get the, the film off the ground? You know, really what we were trying to do was um, was tell a story that we thought was of great importance and um, try and uh, protect the essence of Alan Turing and his legacy while not shying away from, uh, you know, from the pain and injustice that naturally comes with telling the story. Um, so getting it off the ground was, was really more about reading the script and then saying, okay, how are these pieces going to come together? And I think we believed that the importance of the story would generate interest from 
directors and from cast. Um, you know, I think the interest on uh, on the casting side and, and people like Benedict Cumberbatch and Kira Knightley and Mark Strong and Charles Dance. I mean, that was that was um, that was something we were so incredibly lucky to have. Great that the story has traveled so so far internationally. So, Graham, I mean, had you visited Bletchley Park before you got interested in, in making the the film? Um, I hadn't visited Bletchley before. For making the film, but uh, sort of at, at various stages in the writing process, um, sort of the mid stage, I went and visited Bletchley, and it's it's amazing to walk around there. And even I mean, you can go in and sort of touch the machines, and I think there's something um, as a writer that sort of tactile experience of kind of um, seeing it, at, seeing it in front of you, touching the walls. It's like it reminds you of the sort of responsibility when you're telling a story like this. Like this is a true story. This is about real people. This really happened, and so we all felt, um, and I, I know Teddy and Morton and, and Benedict, Kira, everyone felt this tremendous responsibility to be able to, to tell this, this story accurately and fairly and, and do it justice. But how much of the film was actually shot at Bletchley Park? I think it was about four days uh, out of just a little over 40. Um, you know, we, we had looked at it to try to figure out, could we shoot um, Hut 8? which you'll see in the film there, but for a variety of, of reasons, it made sense to actually build a hut just so we could have flexibility from a shoot standpoint. So we ended up finding uh, sort of our hero of Bletchley Park um, in Nettlebed, which is just off of Penley. Uh, and uh, we did uh, the exterior huts uh, up around Bister, and then we did some of the interiors that we could uh, at Bletchley. Fantastic. And, and finally, Graham, as we'll see in the film, uh, the Alan Turing character is actually very funny and, uh, and amusing. I mean, wh what did you draw on to, 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 ha to show those little uh, glimpses of, of humour from, from the, the, the true story of Alan Turing? Um, yeah, you know, I think, I think having some, some humour in the film was, was really important to all of us, me and, and Morton very much included. I think that, um, because I think that Turing's life was funny. You know, I think that one of the things that I was so fascinated by in this film was was giving a really three-dimensional portrait of Turing um, because he was he was a willful man. He was a driven man. He was a passionate man. Um, and, and we wanted the film to express all of that, um, the sort of awkward situations that he could experience. I think, um, obviously, you know, his is a story that ends so tragically, um, and we wanted to, uh, we wanted the film to, to show that. We wanted the film to, to face uh, full on the tragedy of what he experienced, but also, um, certainly at the beginning, to, to depict the, the full spectrum of Turing's life. Brilliant. Okay, well, thanks very much indeed, uh, gentlemen. Uh, all best wishes for the, the film. Uh, is in cinemas from uh, November the 14th. Thank you very much for joining us, and all the best. Right, so now we're going, to, we're going to see another clip and then we're going to turn to the gentleman from, from Bletchley Park. Uh, this, this next clip is called Christopher and is about the, the beginnings of the digital computer. Are you trying to build your universal machine? I read your paper at university. Is it already being taught? <laughs> no, no, I was precocious. So... You, you theorized a machine that could solve any problem. It didn't just do one thing, it did everything. It, it wasn't just programmable, it was reprogrammable. Hmm. Is that your idea behind Christopher? Well, human brains can compute large sums very quickly. Even Hugh can do that, but I want Christopher to be smarter. To make a calculation and then uh, to determine what to, to do next. Like a person does. Think of it. An electrical brain. A digital brain. Computer. Digital computer. All started there. Um, so, Sir John Scarlett, um, you've been uh, chairman of the, of the Bletchley Park Trust and obviously before that involved with the intelligence service. How important was what Alan Turing was doing there for the war effort and subsequently? <clears throat> But what was done at Bletchley, which was actually technically uh, part of um, MI6, the Secret Intelligence Service at that time, or, although uh, in practice and in reality it is the antecedent of uh, GCHQ, um, what, what was achieved there is 
Well, it probably is the single biggest continuous achievement in intelligence terms ever. It's hard to overestimate the significance of what is achieved, and we need to remember that history when you watch the personal story in the film. So John Scarlett gave us the sort of importance in, in, in military terms. T tell us about the importance in, in computing in scientific terms of what went on at Bletchley Park. Yeah, this is, this is quite interesting. I mean, there's this rather charming scene between uh, Kira and uh, Benedict that you see where they talk about this sort of like idea of a universal computer. So you might get the sense that this machine that's built in the movie that's called Christopher, and you'll, I won't explain why because I don't want to spoil it for you, but um, the, the, this machine called Christopher is like the world's first electronic computer. I, there's, a, there's a lot of... Anglo-American tension about who actually made the world's first uh, stored program electronic computer and there are lots of first stored program computers, there's lots of first electronic computers and, and so forth. So there's you know, many, many claims around this. And now we do have a very special guest with us today. Anne um, is uh, related to a Googler, I believe, and uh, worked on the bomb machine at Bletch Bletchley Park uh, in the war. Can you tell us what, uh, what you did there? at Bletchley Park. Is there anybody else here who w worked at Bletchley Park at that time? <laughs> no. I'm obviously the oldest person here. Then. <laughs> um, well, I think it could be a marvellous film. I've read, you know, read about um, the man who's playing the part, and it seems to me he's, you know, will be do a very good job. Um, but we lived outside Bletchley, and we came in by bus every day. And we worked uh, three hour, eight hour shifts, uh, three times with eight hours, and there were about 20 of us. And it was very exciting to get the, the bomb brought up the right setting, and we sent off. And then occasionally, Hut 6 would tell us what we'd done. Not very often, but just occasionally, we were told what had happened. Thank you so much for coming, and many thanks for what you did. Um, and just, just finally over to, to, to Dermot to, to ask, with much debate about, about why the bomb was called the bomb, can you explain? Well, um, I, I can't claim to have the definitive story, but I've asked lots of people, and the, the, um, the idea is that the bomb was named the bomb because the Poles, who had done this amazing work... Um, trying to crack the enigma in Poland before the um, uh, German invasion of Poland in 1939, they, they'd invented a machine to try and uh, uncover the settings. It wasn't as sophisticated as the Turing Welshman bomb that you'll see in the movie. But um, apparently they called it the bomber. And so then, well, all right, you've just restated the question. You know, you haven't answered it. Why did the Poles call it the bomber? Well, we think, and I'm, I'm, I'm willing to accept other theories, by the way. So if anybody's got better ideas than this, then please, please do let me know. But we think it's because, well, first of all, it made this sort of ticking noise. And then when it got to the end of its runs, it made a clonking noise. So it's all tick, 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 clonk. Sounds like a bomb, doesn't it? But um, apparently also the Poles used to go out and have a sort of mid-afternoon snack where they go around to the local cafe and they just order an ice cream, which is, you know, like a, like a bomb, you know, like the French dessert. It's a bomba in Polish. So, the, so they, they did that. But I think the real reason is this, that if you've got something that's really, really good, you know, if you're German, you say prima, or if you're French, you say super. Um, and the theory, that Sir John and I have this theory, that if you're British, you say, I say, that's not bad, not bad at all. Um, <laughs> and... Um, and if you're Polish, you don't say any of those things. You say bomba. <laughs> so we think that may be the reason. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you to all our guests. Really fantastic and interesting stuff. Thank you so much to Anne for, for coming. Now, um, the film begins in uh, 10 minutes' time. So we're going to take a very quick break. Go and get yeah, yourself an ice cream or a, or a beer. Well and uh, we'll reconvene just before 6, six o'clock, please. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> 
Who are you? Alan Turing. This war, we're not winning it. Break the code, we have a chance. Enigma is the greatest encryption device in history. It is unbreakable. Based on the incredible true story. What if only a machine can defeat another machine? You do not have to do this alone. You've got more secrets than the best of them. It's a superb thriller. Five stars. My machine will work. The world is an infinitely better place because of you. The Imitation Game, in cinemas November 14th.